Master Bartle is indeed a lucky man. <laughs> Aye, his wife will be silent at least one day. <laughs> a pretty spectacle. My bosom companion seated in the stocks again. But it pains me more than thee. I. But not in the same place. Here comes your beloved now. Oh, Bartholomew. Bartholomew, stand before me, please. Please stand before me. Good day, Mistress Abigail. Good day, Master Bartholomew. And hast thou seen Master Sampson? I'm waiting here for him. Oh, look, Mother, Master Sampson's in the stock. Greetings, Mistress Abigail. Jenna. Better heed the teaching of the Reverend Dimmesdale, or you will end your days on the scaffold. Hey, Ishtima. Dima by Utuwa, by Origa. Vila Scotte, Tava Iteshima. Good day, mistress. Can you serve me food and lodging? Lodging, we have none. But can you not return later for food? Even now, the bell summons us all to the square. Is it a feast day? Have you not heard of the scandal in the Master Dimsdale's church? From whence came you? From the south, where I was shipwrecked and spent two weary years among the heathen. Oh. It must gladden your heart to again be in a land where iniquity is searched out and punished. Truly. Even today a gentlewoman is being punished by the magistrate for adultery. Does her husband accuse her? Oh, no. No, she's a widow. Her husband was a learned doctor. The plague which was raging in London detained him, so he sent her on ahead. What happened to him? He must be at the bottom of the sea, for there have been no tidings from him in over two years. Being left to her own misguidance, his wife, Hester Prynne, went astray. Hester Prynne? She's alive. A purer creature never lived. You know her? Know her? I'm her husband. Her husband's best friend. Oh. Who accuses her? Her child. Just a prim, a child. Aye, a little girl. You mean, Hester Prynne has born a child in the past two years? 
I do. It would be well for the public if we women had the handling of such fuzzies as Hester Friend. Well said, good wife. We would teach her a pretty lesson. to look upon a gentlewoman shame. But Master Dimsdale, Moses in the law commands that such as she be stoned. Yes, but one greater than Moses said, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone. Master Dimsdale, you should not take the sin of one of your flock so much to heart. Governor Bellingham, our Lord did pardon such a one. He said, go woman and sin no more. Cannot we do as much? Oh, no, with mock itself, if pardon did precede the penalty. on ye righteous people of the colony of the Massachusetts. <laughs> make way, good people. Make way in the king's name. Look, the baggage walks with the dignity of a queen. Has she no shame? Peace, peace. She suffers enough. found guilty of adultery. We are loath to invoke the full penalty of the law. So if you would have us be merciful, reveal the name of him that tempted you. No. Master Dimmersdale, as her pastor, you know best what arguments to use to prevail upon her to speak his name. It wrong the very nature of woman to force her to lay open her heart secret before so great a multitude. The shame lay in the commission of this sin, not in the showing of it. Someone must deal with this sinner. Shall it be you or I? Poor Master Dimmesdale. It is a shame that such a scandal should come upon his congregation. Esther Prynne. I beg you to speak out the name of your fellow sinner. Be not silent from any mistaken pity for him. For your silence compels him to add hypocrisy to sin. Though he has not the courage to grasp it for himself. For the peace of his soul. Do not deny him the comfort of an honest confession. Even though he were to step down from a high place to share your shame. Speak, woman, speak! I, speak! Speak! No! No, never! I, I wish I could bear his agony as well as mine. Esther Prim, so that all men may know you are guilty of the sin of adultery, and shun you as a thing of evil, it is now ordered that you shall wear upon your bosom for the rest of your natural life 
the scarlet letter A. A wise sentence. She will be a living sermon against sin. But she can cover them off with her hand and stroll about as bold as ever. True. It would be better if they put the brand of the hot iron on her forehead. That she could not hide. Let her cover the mark as she will. The pain of it will always be in her heart. You should not have come here. Hester, I cannot keep silence. I will not see you go through life with that infamous brand, while people look upon me with reverence. I must reveal myself for what I am. No, no, Arthur. It would make my burden only the heavier to see you dishonored. How can I stand in my pulpit and meet the eyes of the people who are hungry for truth, knowing in my soul that I am a living lie? Hester, we must marry. Think not of us. Your duty is with the people. They've entrusted their very souls to your care. If we destroy their faith, where will they turn? What will they do? What can a ruined soul like mine do towards the redemption of other souls? You have repented. Your life is not less holy than it appears in their eyes. To destroy their faith would be a greater sin. And... And it would only shatter the love we bear each other. No, Arthur, it cannot be. But what has become of you? My salvation and yours can come only from heaven. Our very lives must be a living penance. It is God's will. His will be done. Bless you, Hester. And may you find peace. May you find peace. Hester. Hester, what's the matter? It's nothing. I, it, it, it's been such a trying day. And I'm tired. Please. Please leave me. Hello? The story is a strange one. Since the divine hand of Providence guided you here, I bid you welcome. Thank you, sire. Uh, sign the record.
Who? A doctor of medicine. Fortunately, it was my skill in that science that won the friendship of the Indians and enabled me to make my way here. Well, the colony is indeed fortunate. We have long needed a skilled man of medicine. Thank you. Now, where can I find lodging? The tavern is already filled. Uh, well, that could, uh, is indeed a problem. The... Oh, Master Dimmersdale. Master Dimmersdale. Yes, sir. Reverend Dimmersdale, this is Dr. Roger Chillingworth. I bid you welcome. Thank you. Uh, Master Dimmersdale, is there not an unoccupied room where you dwell at Mistress Crackstone's house? Yes, sir, there is. I am sure that Mistress Crackstone will be pleased to let you have it. I'll gladly take you there. Thank you. It's good to hear that you are a doctor. Mistress Prynne has suffered much today. Will you attend her? As soon as I secured my lodging. It will be an act of kindness. Mm. One that will give me pleasure, indeed. Drink. I have thought of death, have wished for it, would even have prayed for it, were it fit as such as I should pray for anything. Yet, if death be in this cup, I bid you think well before you see me drink it. Have no fear. My vengeance is to let you live, to give you medicines against harm. So that your burning shame may still blaze against your bosom. I will see your punishment in the eyes of men and women. Yea, even in the eyes of your own misbegotten child. So drink. Roger, I have wronged you greatly. We have wronged each other. Mine was the first wrong for thinking that one so young could mate with one as old as I. You know I was frank. I felt no love for you, nor pretended any. True. It was my folly and your weakness. So between you and me, the scale hangs fairly balanced. But Hester... The man lives who has wronged us both. Who is he? 
that you shall never know. Never. If he walk the earth, I'll find him. If he be in hell, I'll follow him. No, no. The fault is mine. You must not harm him. Have no fear. I shall not betray him to the law. Let him hide himself in outward honor if he may. Nonetheless, he shall not escape me. Roger Prina. Grin. Roger Prin lives no more. I demand of you that you breathe not to a human soul that you did ever call me husband. Henceforth, I shall be known as Roger Chillingworth. Why not announce yourself openly and cast me off at once? Because I care not for the dishonor that follows the husband of a faithless woman. Therefore, let me be known to the world as one already dead. I will keep your secret. As you've kept his, I hope. <coughs> and now, Hester, I leave you alone. Alone with your infant and your shame. It would be easier to take the wheel off if we removed the water casks. Quiet. I was about to do so. This work would go much faster when my helper, a man, instead of a midget, Oh, yay? Uh, hey. My name is Samson, and I'm as strong as my name be token. Sayest thou? Sayest I. Couldst thou unaided support the cart? Of a certainty. Then position thyself. To. Just look at this. Only five years old and beginning to wear already. Well, I think five years wear is good enough. That's the trouble with you young folks. You have no sense of good or bad. Well said, Mrs. Abigail. When I was a girl, things were very different. Is this graceful? Only last week, Thomas Cook was seen kissing his wife on the Sabbath. Oh, is it so sinful to love a wife on the Lord's Day? For oh, shame. That's a workaday duty. Take heed, young woman. Lest you end up like yon miserable sinner. I always said her punishment was much too light. Pearl! Pearl! She has great skill with a needle. I would that I could employ her to make my wedding garment. Wedding garment? It is enough that honest folk let her earn her livelihood with her needle. But to permit her to sew on wedding garments... Well, that would be an ill omen. Where were you, dear? Picking flowers. Aren't they lovely? Who made the flowers, Mother? God did. Who made me? God the Heavenly Father made all things. I found the flowers in the field. Where did you find me? <laughs> I found you on a rose bush. Oh, you run on, dear. Look at that child dancing like a heathen. Like mother, like child. It would be better if that young one were given over to a more God-fearing woman for training. Mm -hmm. Say, Master Hockey. 
him. Oh. Will you repair my basket? Oh, it'll be a pleasure. It's quite heavy. <laughs> Mistress Billings was ill. I did her washing also. Hey! It will take but a moment. Go away, you cannot play with us. Go away! There you are, Mrs. Prince. This is good as new. Thank you. Yourself. She started it. She's to blame. <gasps> Dizzy, come here. Who did it? She did it. You a little heathen. I'll teach you. <laughs> Look to your own children, mistress. My child was not to blame. Yours is the blame. If you were an honest, God-fearing woman and brought your child up in a proper manner, this would never happen. Say what you will about me. I can tolerate your insults, but lay not a hand on my child or you will rue it. How dare you speak like that to me? If you taught your child its proper place, there would be no trouble, because my children know better than to have anything to do with your brat. You're a disgrace to the colony, and your child will end just like you. It would be a blessing if she were taken away from you and brought up in a Christian manner. Silence, Mistress Abigail. I was but telling this Silence, woman. Silence, Mistress Abigail. You've said enough. Thank you, Master Dimsdale. Come, dear. It is a strange child. It is easy to see her mother in her. I wonder if by studying the child, one could learn who the father might be. You take the burdens of your flock too much to heart. Your help won't permit it. It's all right, Roger. I'll be all right. There, there. <laughs> Don't cry. <laughs> Mother, why won't they let me play with them? No, no. <laughs> but, Mother, I want to play too. <laughs> Pearl, dear, you love your mother, don't you? Of course I do. Well, you would not want to go out and play and leave me all alone, would you? Of I like course. to play, too. Do you? Of course I do. And we'll not let them play with us either, will we? No. And we'll play soldiers, too. Yes. And I'll be the captain. The captain. Now, let Here's your sword. Thank you. But where's yours? <laughs> <laughs> boom! 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 His Excellency, Governor Bellingham, demands your immediate attendance. 
Well, well, what does he want me for? I do not know. Make haste. I'll, I'll be there as soon as I change my dress. Very well. Mr. Prim, the point has been discussed whether we do well to trust your child to the guidance of one who has stumbled and fallen. The child needs to be instructed in the truths of heaven and earth. Uh, what can you do for her in this way? I can teach my child what I've learned from this. Woman, it is because of the stain which that letter indicates we would transfer the child to other hands. Nevertheless, this badge has taught me, it daily teaches me, lessons whereof my child may be the wiser and better. We shall judge for ourselves. Oh, Master Dimmersdale, examine this child and see whether she has such training as befits one of her age. Come here, child. What's your name? Pearl. Can you tell me who created you? Nobody. Mother found me on a rose bush. This is awful. Uh, we need inquire no further. For the child's welfare, she shall be taken out of your charge. No, no, no. She's mine. God gave her to me in place of all the things he's taken from me. She's my happiness and my punishment, too. You cannot take her. My poor woman, the child shall be well cared for. Far better than you can do it. God gave her into my keeping and I, I will not give her up. You speak for me. You are my pastor. You know me better than these men. You know what a mother's rights are. Speak for me. Don't let them take my baby away. There is truth in what she says. God gave her the child, and there is a sacredness in that relation. Make that plain, Master Dimmersdale. The Heavenly Father has sent this child as a blessing, and also as a punishment, a constant reminder of her fall from grace. This child was meant above all things else to keep a mother's soul alive. For Hester Prynne's sake, then, and no less for the poor child's sake, let us leave them as Providence has seen fit to place them. You speak, my friend, with a strange earnestness. We will leave the matter as it now stands, providing you send the child to Reverend Dimmersdale for proper Christian training. It shall be done. Bartholomew, wilt thou please go away? Ingrate, I am but trying to aid thee. I've done my courting these past five years without thy aid. And I do not need it now. Mm, five years and no progress. It is well nigh impossible to court a woman with her children always present. A mere trifle. Sayest thou. Sayest I. If thou wilt but let me speak for thee, the bans will be posted on the morrow. Of a certainty? Of a certainty. Remember, I will be the spokesman. Thou art a friend indeed. Look to your appearance. Oh, thank you, Master Bartholomew. Won't you come in?
Thou art a great aid indeed. A mere trifle. <clears throat> uh, Mistress Crackstone, uh, I have come on an affair of the heart. Won't you sit down, Master Bartholomew? Abigail. For well nigh five years, Did you read? Humidity? Come here. Study your catechism. For five years, a man has, uh, A rare coincidence. It is the self-same courting trumpet my first husband used when he asked me to marry him. What did you say? I said, for well nigh five years, someone has loved me dearly. Excellent. Proceed. I said, he is no longer content to worship thee in silence. What did she say? She said, oh, Master Bartholomew. I said, has he your permission to speak to you on a question that is close to his heart? What did she say? She said, speak with an open heart. Here. No! She said no. Oh. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, doctor. I see you've been gathering herbs. I have to make medicine for Master Dimmersdale. Poor man. People do say he is much too saintly to remain long on this earth. How is he today? As well as could be expected. It is a blessing they dwell together. Only his constant attention sustains the minister's health. A touching devotion. But what is more noble than a loyal friend? I. What is more no... Is that you, Roger?
How are you feeling this afternoon? No better. Ah, uh, no worse. Ah, uh, have patience, my friend. What a peculiar looking herb. Where did you find it? In the graveyard. On a grave that had no marker to commemorate the dead man. Save these dismal leaves. Perhaps it grew from his heart and carries some hideous secret that he had done better to confess during his lifetime. Perhaps he earnestly desired it, but could not. Why not? Some men are kept silent by their very natures. They shrink from showing their sins to the eyes of man. Even that is better than to suffer the hellish tortures of a guilty conscience. Maybe so. Arthur, as one in charge of your physical well-being, have all your ills been laid fairly open to me? What do you mean? Why do you ask? A bodily sickness is often but the symptom of a spiritual alarm. If you would have me heal the bodily evil, you must firstly open the trouble in your soul. If it be the soul's disease, then I commit myself to the one physician of the soul. Not to you. I am sorry. Forgive me, Arthur. There is a woman who has none of the misery of a hidden sinfulness. Is she less miserable, think you, for the scarlet letter on her bosom? I do believe it. Is Master Dimmersdale home? Yes. I brought little Pearl for her lesson in catechism. Master Dimmersdale. Yes. Mistress Prynne has brought the child for her lesson. Oh, thank you, Abigail. I leave you with your pupil. You want to please your mother, do you not? Yes, Master Dimsdale. Come to me, my child. Now pay heed to what I teach you. Yes, Master Dimsdale. God is the Heavenly Father. He's the father of all children. But they have a real father. I want one, too. If, if it will make you feel any happier, think of me as your father. I am as a father to all my flock. Do you know your letters? What is it? It's the great letter A. How do you know? Because Mother always wears it here. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightst be justified when thou speak, and be clear when thou judge. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part, 
and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know thy wisdom. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not the Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy Amen. and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy way, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me my blood guiltiness, O God, and thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in Thine eyes were closed. I was but meditating. Thinkest thou thou knowest the way to heaven? So well thou couldst find it with thine eyes closed? Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of the righteous. With burnt offering and whole burnt offering, then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. There is one who is ill and not with us this day. So let us pray that Sister Allerton may soon be well. Heavenly Father, deliver thy child who is ill and not with us this day. If it be thy will to take one of us, take me. I who wear the black garments of the priesthood am utterly a pollution and a lie. Spare this righteous woman and take me, the vilest of sinners, and an abomination in thy sight. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable unto thee, O God, my strength and my redeemer. An inspired sermon of godly youth. He is indeed a saint. God cannot refuse his prayers. Mistress Allerton must soon be well. Yes, indeed. Good day. Good day. Good day. If our good pastor beholds such sinfulness in his own white soul, what horrid spectacle would he see in thine? Or thine. Yes, dear. Mother, may I tell Mrs. Allerton? The minister prayed for her. Yes, dear. We'll tell her tonight. We'll make her very happy. I'll not leave you alone. It won't be for long. The doctor will soon be here. But I'll wait he come. Here, drink this. It'll make you strong. Esther, I have greatly wronged you. Will you forgive me? Oh, Looking better this evening. 
how his minister's prayers are beginning to bear fruit. But his prayers and Hester Prim's brought. It's no miracle I recover. I hear good tidings of you on all hands. Only yesterday, the council was debating as to whether the scarlet letter should be taken off your bosom. Well, I worthy to be rid of it. It would fall off of its own nature. But if it suits you better, then wear it. Good night, Mr. Salatin. I will see you tomorrow. Good night, Mr. Spring. We have treated her most unkindly. No one ever went near her, save Master Dennis Dale. And he only went out of duty to her soul. Yes, I am convinced daily he has done much for her soul. Heavenly Father, behold in me a sinner. I have sinned before heaven and in thy sight. Hester. Hester Prim. Is that you? Hester Prim, is it you? Yes. Come up. Come here. You have both been here before. But I was not with you. Arthur, have you not found peace? No, nothing but despair. But the people reverence you. Does that bring you no comfort? More misery. When I look inward and see the black reality of what they idolize, I would their reverence would turn to scorn and to hatred. You wrong yourself. Your sin is left behind you long ago. Look, the letter A. Even the heavens proclaim my guilt. Nothing but the storm. Come, Arthur, come. You should not stand here. No. No, no. Now I stand where I should have stood five years ago. By your side. Who's there? Your good friend, Roger Chillingworth. How did you know I was here? I knew nothing of the matter. I was returning from the bedside of Mistress Allerton. My good friend, surely the Lord's work does not demand that one even so pious as you should attend his flock at such an unseemly hour as this. You must rest. Else these night whimsies will grow upon you. Come, let me take you home. Good day, Mistress Prim. You sent for me? Yes.
Oh, dear. Run out and play. All right, Mr. Junior. So, Mistress Hester has a word for old Roger Chillingworth. Speak freely and I will answer. Five years ago, you made me pledge secrecy to the fact that you were my husband. In doing so, I was false to the only man to whom I should have been true. What choice had you? My finger pointed at this man would have hurled him from his pulpit into a dungeon. Better it had been so. What evil have I done the man? That he lives at all is owing to me. You keep him alive only to feed your vengeance. You burrow and rankle in his heart. You cause him to die daily a living death. And still he knows you not. Better he had died at once. Have you not tortured him enough? No, no, I live only for that. Be once more human. You have it at your will to pardon. Do not reject that privilege. No, Hester, never. Very well, do what you will. But he shall know you in your true light. May I not do something for you? No, no. I'll be all right. Just going for my walk. Mr. Crackstone. Oh! I'm seeking Master Sampson. He said he would be here. Won't you sit down and wait for him? Oh. What is this? It is nothing at all. Nothing at all. My best friend and the woman I love. A shame, thou snake in the grass. Oh, be calm, Samson. I can explain. There is not to explain. You know full well it is a sin for a man to behold a woman's nether garment. Samson. Quiet woman, thou hast been dishonored. If thou hast one spark of manhood in thee, thou wilt marry this woman. Aye. It would be the honorable thing to do. But thou lovest her, thou marry her. After thou hast seen her nether garment? Ah. But thou didst see them also. So I did. But Master Bartholomew did see them first. True. Thou must marry the woman. I shall ask the Reverend Demersdale to post the bands. You will have to wait for him. He's gone for his walk in the woods. I've been looking for you. Pearl, Pearl dear, don't go too far. Anna! Esther. Esther, you little know what a relief it is to see you alone. Had I but one friend, or even an enemy, who knew me for what I am, my soul might keep itself alive. But I am that friend, Arthur. And you have such an enemy under the same roof with you. An enemy under the same roof? What do you mean? Oh, Arthur, forgive me. 
truth was the one virtue to which I held fast. Except when your good name was questioned. Then I consented to deception. I... I must tell you. That old man, Roger Chillingworth, was my husband. I might have known. The secret was told me in the natural recoil of my heart. Why didn't you tell me this before? He pledged me to silence. Hester, I can bear no more. You're strong, Hester. Advise me what to do. You must dwell no longer with this man. How can I avoid it? Does the universe lie within compass of yonder town? Says the broad pathway of the sea. It brought you here. It will bear you back again. Begin life anew. There's happiness beyond. No, it cannot be. I have not the courage to venture into a strange land and low. You shall not go alone. Mister. Even now, even now there's a vessel in the harbor. It sails the day after election. I will secretly engage passage. Mister, this is already the new life. Why didn't we think of it sooner? Let us not look back. The past is gone. waiting to see the procession pass. There'll be soldiers marching and drumming. Good day, mistress. I've been seeking you. What is it, Captain? Everything is in readiness. It happened for you, the little girl, and one for the gentleman. That we shall be there. Yes, we're going to sail on the noon tide. And it should be a healthy voyage with the ship surgeon and his other doctor on voyage with us. Have you, have you another passenger? Oh, yes. I suppose you knew. He said he was one of your party. Chillingworth's name. 
He says he's a friend of the gentleman you spoke of. Yes, he knows him. Well, indeed. by the hand. Yes, my love. gathered to hear your election sermon. Could be a calamity were their faith to be destroyed. What do you think they will say on the morrow when they discover that their saintly pastor has fled with the woman of the scarlet letter. My friend, you have failed. It is well that I am sailing with you. Stop! Stop! in me, the one sinner of the world. At last I stand where I should have stood five years ago by the side of Hester Prynne. It's not true. It's not true. He accuses himself falsely. His illness has unbalanced his mind. No, no. At last I see clearly. You have seen Hester's scarlet letter and shuddered at it. But there was one among you whose brand of shame you have not seen. Quiet, madman. Now, at death's door, I stand before you. Look again at Hester's scarlet letter. It is the shadow of what I bear in my own heart. Stand any here who question God's judgment of a sinner? Then behold the dreadful witness of it. Pearl. Pearl, my child. Will you kiss me? Shall we not meet again? Shall we not spend our immortal lives together? Look far into eternity with those bright dying eyes and tell me. What do you see? Peace, Esther. Peace. 